The fifth and last one for today is what we call addition. It will look very similar to this dissection property here, but I want you to look carefully and see the way in which it is different. Okay? If I am integrating from A to B, and what I'm integrating is actually not just a single function, but like a bunch of different functions. And I'll give you an example in a second. Right? So if I'm integrating not just f, but say, I don't know, f and maybe g. So if I'm integrating the sum of two functions, I'm adding two functions together with respect to x. Okay. Then I can calculate this integral sort of like this by separating out the two functions. Okay. So I can say do f first, integrate that guy, integrate him separately, and then do g. Now, I said that this would look quite similar to the dissection property, at least on the face of it. Uh, it certainly looks like, well, you start with one thing and then you end up with two things. Can someone tell me, what is it that makes these two properties different? What's the, what's the distinction between them? Anyone see? Hmm. Tell me, because I see some of you have it, but not all of you. Tell me, what is it that allows me to break this into two pieces? What have I changed from the left-hand side to the right-hand side? I've highlighted it for you. I changed the boundaries, right? I said, okay, let's, um, let's divide up the boundaries into two parts, okay? But if you look over here at this property, the boundaries remain the same. Do you notice that? A to B, A to B, A to B. I've divided up something else. What have I divided? So, at the moment, you don't actually have a name for this. I guess you would call it the thing that you're integrating. But this actually has a name, and so I'm going to teach it to you. Uh, it doesn't get said very much, um, but if you see this anywhere, now you know what it's talking about. This is called the integrand. It's a great name. Um, the thing that you are integrating, the thing which you are going to search for the primitive function, the thing whose area underneath the curve you're trying to evaluate, we call that the integrand. So I separate out the integrand into its component pieces. And I can say, look, that integral, that, that sum, the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. Okay? And that's kind of very similar if you think back to differentiation. Um, if you differentiate a function which has like different pieces to it, like this. You guys have been doing this for months now, right? All you have to do is, <coughs> excuse me, differentiate the first one and then differentiate the second. So because we have noticed that differentiation and integration are kind of like inverse processes, then it shouldn't surprise us that much that many of the things we can do with differentiation, we can also do with integration. Okay? So I want to give you an illustration for this, and then I'm going to set you to work. Okay? So let's consider the integral from 0 to 1 of this function. Okay? Now, I know because I've given you, I've intentionally given you a very simple function, okay? You could just go ahead and you could work out the primitive. By the way, what is the primitive of x squared? It's x to the power goes up, x cubed divided by 3, the new power, okay? And then this guy will be x squared on 2, because you divide by the new power. So you could easily work out what this primitive is. But I want to illustrate for you using this addition property, okay? How can I consider this geometrically? Because every time you look at a, a new object, sorry, from the same object from new angles, you get new information. So I can write it as two integrals. What will they be? 0 to 1 of x squared. That's, that's my f in this case, right? And I can add it to this guy, 0 to 1 of x, just the second piece. Okay. OK, let me try and visualize this for you. So sorry, let me open this up. Yeah, hide some stuff. Okay, uh, remote, remote. There we go. All right. Okay. Don't worry too much about my equation soup over here on the left hand side. We'll come to that in a minute. This is x squared plus x, it doesn't look very much like x squared plus x, but that's because you can see I have restricted the domain, right? If I just take off that restriction, let's do that. 
ta-da, there's the rest of the parabola, right? So you can see, oh, that's, that's what you expect, because you could factorize out an x, which would leave you with x times x plus 1. That gives you a root at 0 and a root at negative 1. So, so far, so good. OK, let me put that restriction back, because this graph is going to get really busy really fast. So I only am interested in this right-hand side, OK? So you just superimpose the rest of the parabola over there if you like, if you try to struggle with it. Okay. Now the area that we are interested in from naught to one, what does it look like? It looks like no, nope, wrong one. Uh, ooh, where is it? Where's it gone? Hold on, bear with me. X squared plus. Oh, I see. Sorry, I have to change something. That's better. There's the area that I'm after. Okay. So you can see the boundary naught boundary one, and there it is, the whole thing bounded underneath the curve. So far, so good. Yeah? But what I'm suggesting is, we can break this into two pieces. Right? What are the two pieces? Well, here's y equals x. That's one of the functions in there. Right? The area underneath there, I'm suggesting we can add, so let me just show you that area underneath there. There it is. Okay. That area underneath there, we can add to the area underneath, what's the other part of the function that I'm missing? I've got x already. The other part is just x squared, right? So I told you it's going to get busy really fast. There's x squared, OK? So what does the area underneath that look like? OK, it's too many colors, too many overlapping things, OK? So what's going on? Well, let's have a look and see uh, if I get rid of this guy for you. And I want to leave that one. This one, OK. So what I want to show you is, if I bring down this, here we go. Okay. So what I want to show you is the, the whole area which goes all the way up to here. Do you remember that? Have you got it visually in your memory? Okay. That whole area here is the sum of this area, which is underneath x squared, in addition to this area, this triangle. Does that make sense? Which means that the area I've got colored right now should be the same as the difference between these two lines. Let me show you. Okay, watch carefully. I'm going to move this guy, if my finger's any good, I'm going to move this guy upwards. Okay, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm trying to show the comparison between the area under x squared, that parabola, and the area between x squared plus x and x. That's the difference, right? So watch as it moves. Okay, what's actually happening? Well, what I'm adding it to is this line here. Do you see it? Are you convinced that these are the same? Let me move it again. In fact, I'll get it to move itself. Okay. So you can see when you start with just regular x squared. Okay. Regular x squared is underneath here, familiar parabola shape. Okay. But as you add x to it, and as you do that sort of gradually, what happens? Well, you're adding nothing at this point. right? Do you see why I add nothing? What's the y equals x line equal to at that point? It's equal to 0. So that's why it doesn't go anywhere. Right? Over here, on the other hand, you're adding a huge amount. You're adding much more. Right? Does that make sense? And in between, you're adding these increasing amounts. So that's why, watch the, the curvature of the parabola. Do you see it sort of curves upward? Right? In fact, you're kind of spinning it around because you're, you're, not just adding, you're not just vertically shifting. You're actually adding a different amount each time. So now I'm going to stop it just because it, it weirds out my brain too much. Okay. So we're saying blue area, purple area, they're the same. So therefore, if I want this total area, adding this and adding this have the same effect. right? So therefore, if I get rid of that purple one and say, there we go. Sure enough, there is the original area you saw, but now I've divided it into two pieces. There is the underneath x part. And there is the underneath x squared part. I've just put it in the right place. It doesn't belong down here. It actually belongs up here, and that gives you the real parabola you're interested in. Does that make sense? OK, so let me put this away. These ideas here, just like you had to get used to the way differentiation works, we're now going to have to get used to the way integration works. It's a new kind of object. Um, admittedly, one of the things that's most confusing about it is that you've spent so long differentiating that when you have to think, wait, how do I work with this integrand again? What's the primitive? Um, our brains forget that you have to do everything in reverse, right? So that's probably the biggest 
like it's like it's literally like learning to drive in reverse which is not very easy okay so you will get more confident as it with it as you get more practice 